Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail Critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains! And today, we are going to discuss another steam explosion. We haven't done this in a while, and, uh... Yeah, I figured let's just throw it back to what I used to do. You know, I can do this occasionally still and talk about times where locomotives decide to just spontaneously, well, not spontaneously, but they blow up. Okay, steam locomotives do have a history. It's rare, but it does occur where kaboom. And that's what we're going to talk about. This is the time a Heisler exploded. Now, maybe some of you outside of the realm of knowing uh, are probably like, what the heck is a Heisler? I will happily explain this. I have brought them up before, but uh, maybe you missed that video. Heislers are one of three main types of geared steam locomotives. They were actually the last ones to be patented out of the three by Charles L. Heisler in 1892. Their inner workings are a little bit similar to Climax locomotives, but the Heislers use two cylinders canted inwards at a 45 degree angle, which forms a V-twin arrangement. The power then went into a longitudinal drive shaft at the center of the frame, and that drove the outboard axle on each powered truck through beveled gears. The inboard axle on each truck was then driven from the outboard one by external side rods. It results in a pretty unique looking locomotive, the reason geared locomotives were even used at all is because their tractive effort was stupid. They were never very fast, but they could pull a lot, and they were very useful for mining, logging, and rural operations in general because of that particular purpose. The Shea is the other type of main geared steam locomotive, and they were the most successful ones. Similarly, a separate patent in 1897 covered a three-truck locomotive that was similar to Class C Shea's. But the Heisler's design did not have a continuous string of line shafting running the length of the engine. The tender truck was actually driven by a line shaft above the shaft driving the main engine trucks, connecting it through spur gears. The Heisler wound up being the fastest of the geared steam locomotives overall. And by fast, I mean not very fast at all, but faster than the others. It did have some advantages over Shays, believe it or not, despite the Shays being way more successful. Since the gearing was inside the frame, it was protected, unlike a Shay whose gears are out. But the Heisler's drive shaft, which was in the center, gave it limited firebox space, and that caused some designs to have issues with steaming. But other than that, they were actually pretty good, and did see a decent amount of success. 625 Heislers were produced over the years, and 35 are held in preservation. The one that we're talking about today was Escambia Railway Engine number 99. And, well, first of all, what the heck is Escambia Railway? I never heard of that. Well, you probably haven't. It was a small railway that was operated by the Alger Sullivan Lumber Company, hence why they even had a Heisler. The railway operated in Florida, in what is now present-day Century. 99 was actually purchased by them brand new, and used to haul logs from the logging operations. However, in 1922, well, it suffered a bit of a accident. Geared steam locomotives are still steam locomotives, and still require the same safety, uh, well, practices as a normal one. As a locomotive was in operation, the boiler, yes, exploded. Though I couldn't find any pictures of the aftermath of this, so it probably looks something like this. The explosion had been caused because of low water, and therefore, yes, 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 you all knew what it was. The crown sheet. Again. Sadly, the fireman was killed, though the engineer miraculously did manage to live, as did 99. It was repaired, which seems to be a running theme. Everyone sees these disasters when it comes to steam locomotives and assumes the locomotives are always scrapped afterwards. But it's not always the case. In fact, more often, they're repaired. The reason for this, as I think I've gone into before, is that most of the expensive bits of a steam locomotive are underneath the boiler. The gearing systems and the wheels and all that stuff, that's expensive. The boiler itself isn't cheap, 
but getting a new boiler is usually a lot cheaper than getting a new locomotive. If the explosion didn't completely obliterate the entire locomotive, and it seems to be the case with this one, then just putting a new boiler on it is going to be a lot less money than replacing the whole thing. The pictures I found of it was actually taken 20 years after the blast, on August 23rd, 1942. Number 99 actually wasn't retired until 1945, and even then still stuck around until at least May of 1957, when it was, inevitably, cut up for scrap. But as I said, there are still plenty of Heistlers around, some in working order, such as the three-truck Heistler at the Cass Scenic Railroad, number 6. And most modern heritage railways take safety very seriously, so I can't imagine such an explosion would happen to a Heistler ever again. And with that, a special thank you to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Sundu267, Orange Glass, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Hot 444, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsune 131-232, Mr. Blackrose, Master of None, Josh Johnson, Metal for Life Guy, Matthew Gavin, Arthur Roy, DM Travel Typhoon, Tommy Rossini, Lord Captain Von Thrust III, Joshua Long, Alaric Jaspers, Brian, Jack Carson's Railroad Videos, Major Klutz, Hayden DeGro, and Ohio Trucker 1. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.